I'm going to start this tutorial kind of risky. Illustrator is not the best place to cut out images or objects from photos. That said, you can still do it. So if you want to do it here in Illustrator, what you need to do is create a path around the object and then create a clipping mask. The best way to create a path, let's say for instance, we want to cut out this avocado right here, is to use the pen tool. Now we want to change our fill and our stroke options. First off, we do not want to fill, so we can click the none icon right here on the fill. Then we click on our stroke and double click it to select a color. I want to select a color that I can see pretty well. So maybe like a hot pink. Now when we go over to our pen tool, we can actually change the size of the stroke over here. I'm going to change it to five point just so that I can see it a little bit better. So we're going to want to outline our object with the pen tool. Now the pen tool is pretty easy. You click, it makes points and you can click around an object. The other way is to click and drag to create curves. So we click and drag, pulls out handles in the direction that we want to go, and then we can start to click and drag in the direction we want to keep going to create these curves. Now if we come to a point where we want to change the direction of our line, what we can do is hold Option or Alt if you're on PC, and click on this handle, and we can change the direction that this line is going to go. So if we wanted it to now come out this way, we can do that. You can see how that works just like that. So let's back this up. For my image here, five points is way too much. I'm going to back that down to two points. I'm going to start right here and just create a point. Then I'm going to zoom in a little bit further. And I think we can just create some points right along this edge. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm clicking and dragging in the direction that I want to head and notice how this is still a little bit too large. So we're going to bump that down to maybe even smaller like 0.25. I just want to be able to see this line around my object. Whatever size your image is in your document, don't worry about it. You can just adjust that stroke size to fit. Now I kind of broke my path here, right? So I can get back on it just by hovering over this last anchor point. I can click on that and I can continue along my path. I'm going to keep clicking and dragging to create the selection or path around my avocado. The more points that you create here, the better. You're gonna be able to really be able to outline this object. I'm gonna go a little bit quicker and kind of ignore some of these bumps here. As we go along, we can just create this path right around our avocado. You might notice that as you click and drag, the further out you drag the handles, the stronger the influence on the curve of your path. You can see where the blue line is, is where that path is gonna line up. So we could just continue this around and trim out the shape of our avocado. You can be as detailed or as not detailed as you want with the creation of your paths as you're going around your shape. And then once you reach the end here, you're gonna see a circle. It's to close out your path. If you like this curve that it ends on, you can just click on that. You could also click and drag to adjust the curve from this handle as well. Now, if you need to go in and fine tune any of these, so if I zoom in here, I might have missed a little bit here. I can use my direct selection tool, which is the white arrow in your toolbar, and I can click on a single point. I can move that point around. I can also adjust specific handles just like this. And finally, with the pin tool, P is the shortcut key, I can actually hold Option or Alt and create extra handles here on my avocado. And I can go back and forth with the A key to select specific handles. And this affects both handles if I wanted to. Back to the pin tool with the shortcut key P. I can also hold Option or Alt to only grab a single handle, just like this. So you can see the power of using the pin tool to create this selection around your object. Now, what we need to do is select our stroke path here and the background by holding shift and clicking on both. We can also click and drag outside of the picture and make sure we cover both the path and our image and we're gonna be able to select both there. Once you do that, right click, make clipping mask. And so now we've cut out our avocado from the image itself. We can scale it up and down. I'm holding shift and alt or option, and we can actually go in and make adjustments. You can see how we missed some of the background here. Double click in, we're inside the clipping group. We can select that path again, press A for the direct selection tool, and we can actually click on this anchor. We can make adjustments to the handles, we can even add points to our path. So if we press the P key, you see the plus icon show up? I could add a point right here, press A, and I could move that point around by clicking it and dragging it. Sometimes you might miss and grab the image, just Command or Control Z to undo. You can completely edit any of these handles if you click on them 
and we can make sure our selection is just perfect by adding handles, adding points, using that direct selection tool to perfect our cutout image. Now the image still exists under here. This is like, I mean, this is adding a clipping mask, so it masks out everything else in the image. To get out of the isolation mode, just go up here and make sure you click back on your layer, or you can double click outside of everything and it'll go back to the original layer. We can click and move this around. If you actually were just cutting something out and wanted to export this with a transparent background, make sure it's on an artboard that has a transparent background. You can go up to view, down to show transparency grid, and this shows you everything that's transparent. So we have this avocado cut out on top of this transparent background. Now we can export either this avocado itself or we can export this artboard by going up to file down to export either export as or export for screens. If we click export for screens, we can look at the artboards or the assets. We don't have any assets included yet. I can show you how to do that. But if we were to export our artboard, what we want it to be is in a PNG format or PDF. You could export it as SVG with that transparent background. But in reality, SVG is most helpful when you create vector graphics. This is an image, so it's not going to retain that same you know, vector quality. So we could just do PNG, select the artboard we want to export, and then we can simply export that artboard. Now, if you wanted to export this as an asset, you can simply click on it, right click, and go to either export selection or collect for export. I would just click export selection and that just brings it right in here. Make sure it's a PNG or a PDF or an SVG if you want, and you'll have that transparent background. The last way I like to export is just file export, export as, and this kind of gives you that similar save dialog box and you can make sure it's a PNG or any of the formats I mentioned before. If you do not use artboards, it's going to literally export everything in your document. So make sure you use artboards, have that asset on that artboard, select the range. This is artboard one and we can hit export right there. That's how to cut out objects and then export them with transparent backgrounds here in Adobe Illustrator.